Hey y'all, grown black folks talk. Back out on the climb. I'm gonna do a couple of quick hits today because there is construction nearby. So we may or may not be able to do any length of video, but we'll find out. I wanted to talk a little bit about meeting Derek Jackson, Captain Derek Jackson. Now, in a very an age in which people are prejudged, he had three things going against him. And then he manifested a fourth and a fifth that are very common in American society. Uh, prejudged, all of which would have caused us to miss enjoying the time spent with a very earnest, the most, I would say he ranks with Captain England. But the difference between him and Captain England, who came before him, is that he grew up in the community, his first beat job was in the community, and now he has gone full circle and become a captain. So he has knowledge, but not the kind of knowledge that is arrogant, like I grew up here and I know what you need. No, the kind of knowledge of knowing that how you live in community is how you respect and listen. But let me back up. His name is Derek Jackson. He's black. He's a man. He's also getting a little older, which hits the ageism, and he doesn't know how to do any of the church things to be exciting. A lot of people, I watched the youth department, the children of the youth, showing that they were bored with him uh, over the course of part of his presentation. Uh, and it would be easy to fall into that gap if you have become acclimatized to needing to have emotional excitement. Okay, here we go. Got a little construction back there. If you're used to emotional excitement and that's why you interact with people and that's what you want in everybody who deals with you, yeah. He is going to bore you a little bit. He really was. But if he was prejudged on any of these things, we would have missed interacting with a caring police officer. A captain. Which means that in our highly... highly gentrified community, there's much less likelihood that... that black people are going to be seen as just there to be removed. That's actually really important for the young people that I serve. Now, of course, I didn't get to ask him questions about his life. Do we know how he treats black women? No, not really. But here's something that you can always tell about anyone. These children, some of them were raised, some of them are the children, various backgrounds, some of their fathers are uh, redeemed ex felons And one of those children felt comfortable enough to ask him, as a police captain, do you really eat a bunch of coffee and donuts? He smiled and he said, I guess you know a bunch of cop jokes, huh? And everybody started that. He said, look, the main thing is not a problem with you asking that because it's actually all true. Everybody broke out laughing. Every single child. Uh, what I can judge about him is that children felt safe around him. It's not easy for black youth to connect with even black police officers. But he did manage in his quiet, humble presentation to convince us that we're not going to be seen as targets on site all the way down to the youngest children. He made a connection earnestly and honestly in that way. The other thing about it is, he said, one of the greatest honors of his life is that his son chose to be a police officer after him. So imagine having more men, police officers, a gentleman named Jackson, and black men who are modeling themselves after their quiet, humble, caring fathers. The other thing is, he's part of the Field Operations Bureau, which means he makes fielding decisions about what police officers are going to be in field for the whole city. Meaning that there will be less police officers in San Francisco streets who see us as something to be removed, barely tolerated, something to be gentrified out. So, that was me meeting Derek Jackson. I should also mention about him, that maybe the Derrick Jackson we all know well was named after him. Captain Derrick Jackson is probably between 55 and 60, and he doesn't have a six-pack. He's definitely got middle-aged dad bod, and he's maybe an inch or two taller than my five foot three. He's about five five. Nevertheless, he had the respect of everyone in that room. 
the warmth and the earnestness of his spirit. Now, why am I also mentioning this? Because it's important to understand that we tend to prejudge people. Uh, I know with the audience I have, a black man has five strikes. A black man has a strike when he, a lot of you when he enters the room. He's a police officer. A lot of us have very deep, fraught feelings about police officers because of things we've seen happening. Um, and again, in the United States society, he's short. He's getting older. He's balding. Um, and he's not fun. He wasn't able to get churchy. He was just his earnest self and won the respect of everyone in the building. And if he can, see, understanding that people do not have to fit social media and media in general's idea of manhood and womanhood and personhood, and that is non, not a European, in order to receive that respect and connection, and he doesn't have to do that, is important for us to know. Because we learn from what we see. And in some way, we're all still very like children. We still learn from what we see. And if a man that had all those strikes against him, including having the name, the other Derek Jackson named after, maybe Derek Jackson, the other one, today his husband had to put the X in his name because he didn't want to live up to being the older captain, man of responsibility, earnest goodness. I reported back on this because I we did that thought exercise and I wanted you to know what that experience was like. Um, not prejudging allowed me to really enjoy the experience. And that's the thought I want to leave you with. As you move through the world and learn how we all rise to freedom and not playing shadow games. I have a little bit more to say about that a little bit later. Alright, do I have to say now? I probably have one more video. Thank you for listening.